Alright everybody, it's your own pal, Double Beeb on the Brew Drone, back with another installment of WGS TV with my Friday Night Smackdown review for the week of January 13th, 2012. We open up with um, a segment involving Daniel Bryan to try to, I guess, hype, put a, uh, you know, hype over the uh, World Heavyweight title match, which was the main event, you know, no, no DQ, no count out between uh, himself and the Big Show. And at one point in the segment, Mark Henry comes out, he says, you know, if I keep my nose clean, you know, if I don't interfere in your match tonight, then I get a World Heavyweight title match next week. You know, I get the winner. Oh, I really don't know where they're going with Daniel Bryan now. You know, I'm, you know I, I put up a video saying, you know, you know, is he turning heel or is he not turning heel? We really can't say right now. But, um... Opening match was Justin Gabriel and Heat Slater. I can follow up on the uh, the storyline from last week during the uh, over the top rope challenge between Heat Slater and Hornswoggle. Yeah, Heat Slater and Hornswoggle. You heard me right. And you know, um, after the match was over, Heat Slater was beaten up in Hornswoggle. Justin Gabriel runs in and makes a save. So I guess they're going to follow up with that other match. And of course, you have to figure you know they got to ins insert Hornswoggle into this match somewhere and. Lo and behold, they do. You know, when Justin Gabriel was, you know, down, he Slater was trying to finish him off. You hear Hornswoggle's music. Hornswoggle appears in the ring, distracts Heath Slater. Justin Gabriel takes advantage of that, and it hits the 450 splash and wins the match. Cody Rhodes took on Ezekiel Jackson. Poor, poor Zeke. Just poor, poor Zeke. He used to be such. A significant name in the WWE. They put the Intercontinental title on him, laid an egg, and now he's basically mid card. I'm sorry to say that, you know, but it's the truth. He's mid card at best. But uh, he, he tried to have a good, decent showing against Cody Rhodes, and uh, I wanna also want to make note of the fact that. Uh, before the match took place, uh, Cody Rose cut a very interesting segment saying that uh, he's going to pull an ultimate warrior. And I'm like, okay, he's going to be an incredible douche. You know, he, he's going to think, I'm the only guy on this planet that matters. Or, if you don't agree with me, you're gay. You know, is he going to pull that? But no, he says he's going to hold the Intercontinental title and the World Heavyweight title just like Warrior did. Of course back in those days they didn't have they didn't allow dual champions. Um next thing you know we have a, a segment involving Teddy Ted, Ted, Teddy Long and uh Drew McIntyre and uh of course Drew McIntyre is on his strike two and if he got to a strike three <laughs> But a um, good match for Ted DiBiase. It looks like they're really starting to use Ted DiBiase more, especially with that uh, DiBiase posse party. And, um, of course, one little time poet could turn into DiBiase pussy. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know, WWE could have one little time poet next to you. know, everybody's going to be out there wanting to buy DiBiase pussy t-shirts. <laughs> uh, I'm a bad boy. But anyway... Uh, I would like to know where they're gonna go. You know where they're gonna go with this uh, Hanico Ted DiBiase storyline. Looks like they're gonna they're trying to make something out of this. Um, you know, t uh, apparently Hanico like is offended about the you know DiBiase posse party and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, to make matters worse for poor old Drew McIntyre, he lost his match. And again, this is just a waste of his talents, a waste of his abilities. You know, and you know, just gonna have him come out there and lose to people left and right. And and, and if they really fire him, you know, if they really let him go, that is just such an incredibly bad mistake. Really bad mistake by the WWE. Next we had the um uh, 
a highlighted match, you know, was Sheamus and Jinder Mahal, or I used to call him A.K.A. Jabra Mahal, until I started watching WWE Superstars, and he beat Ezekiel Jackson last week. But, uh, you, you put up a good match with Sheamus, but again, it's Sheamus, you know. I was, you know, if they were going to put Jinder Mahal over on uh, Sheamus, I'll tell you what, I, I would have been shocked. I would have been really, really shocked. Because... Sheamus is upper card status right now, you know, on the verge of, of title. Jinder Mahal is just mid card at best, and they're gonna have a mid carder go over on Sheamus. Mm. I don't think that I don't think that would have been a very good idea. David Otunga and Santino Morales. This match was set up by Santino when uh, Santino earlier in the night was trying to pitch new uh, match ideas. To Teddy Long, and I uh, bring a reptile to the ring. What the hell is he talking about? And then why is he trying to replicate the uh, a dog kennel from Hell match that Al Snow did? I mean, that was a horrible idea. Anyway, he uh, set up a match with uh, himself and David Otunga, and uh, why does he always have that cup of coffee? Why does he always have to have that that cup, that thermos of coffee? What 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 is he on like a Java high? You know he's gotta have Java, you know, Java, 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 you know. No, I'm David, I'm David instead of him being uh David A list Otonga, he's gonna go on to David Java 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 Otonga. Because everywhere he goes he's gotta have that fucking cup of coffee and I it's driving me nuts. Well it makes me kinda wonder, is that really coffee he's drinking or maybe it's a a beverage of unknown origin? Who's to say? Who's to say? Anyway, uh, very good match. Uh, a tongue and nice outing. Apparently, he's, it's got a new, uh, a new signature move to replace that fucked up spine buster he does, uh, the TKO. And he uses to get the win over Santino. And then somebody call your mama. Somebody call my mama, because Brodus claimed the Funkosaurus. It's now officially on SmackDown. And I, I, I feel bad for Tyson Kidd. Because they're going to tell him, hey, you, not only are you going to take, uh, take on this 375 pound dancing guy, he's going to beat you in less than 30 seconds. Okay. And that's pretty much what happened. Um. We had Tamina and Natalia again. Tamina, I guess she's trying to change up her character to to pay homage to her father, Jimmy Superfly Snooker. But in all honesty, why did we have to have this match again? Why? Because it's basically an exact repeat of last week. You know, it just made absolutely no sense to have this match, but WWE did it anyway. Why? I don't think we'll ever know. Uh, then, for our match, no DQ, no count out. And it was, you know, it had a lot of hype to it. And it's good build, good content, but incredibly shitty ending. Allow me to elaborate on what I'm talking about. The matchup in itself was really good. You know, Daniel Bryan and Big Show, really great spots in the match. But uh, AJ, you know, the spunky video game girl. I still can't understand why I can't get a girl like that. But anyway, she was down at ringside. She also professed her love for Daniel Bryan. And uh, Daniel responded by saying, Okay... And, uh, anyway, she was at ringside in Daniel Bryan's corner. Again, remember, this is no DQ, no count out. Um, at this point in the match, both competitors are on the outside. Um, Big Show is giving chase to Daniel Bryan. And uh, Daniel Bryan sidesteps as a Big Show, and the Big Show runs into AJ. 500 pound man collides with about a 95, 100 pound woman. Next thing you know, Big Show stops, turns around, 
starts crying. The uh, emer uh, the emergency staff came comes out with the with the uh, stretcher. Crowd chanting, "She's okay. She's okay." And Big Show starts crying even more. Daniel Bryan's pissed off. He says, "You know, if the world title means that much to you, you can have it." So, it was a bullshit ending because then we had no decision. Matchup ends with no decision, no winner for the Mark Henry Daniel Bryan match. How long are they gonna prolong this agony? They better be going somewhere soon with Daniel Bryan, Big Show, and Mark Henry. Because to be honest with you, I got mixed feelings about this. Mixed feelings regarding this. Now, this was a two hour program, by the way, guys. Friday Night SmackDown. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight matches on a two hour show. Eight matches. You know, Justin Gabriel, Heath Slater, Cody Rose, Ezekiel Jackson, Ted DiBiase, Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, Jinder Mahal, David Otunga, Santinos, Brodus Clay, and Tyson Kidd. By the way, that lasted less than 30 seconds, just to let everybody know. Tamina and Natalia and Daniel Bryan and Big Show. And, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, but for my match of the night, I'm going to go with Sheamus and Jinder Mahal, because that one was, was actually thoroughly entertaining. Everything else was just way too short for, for me to even give a damn. Uh, David Otunga and Santino Morello are a close second, but I don't know. I'm I gotta go with she Seamus Mahal and Jinder uh, she Seamus Mahal. Seamus and Jinder Mahal is what I gotta go with. So, that's been my review of Friday Night Smackdown. And what I wanna know is, what did you guys think of Friday Night Smackdown? You know the ways to do it. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Or, leave a video response. What did you think of Friday Night Smackdown? And also, I wanna know, what was your match of the night and why? That's what I want to know from you guys. Your thoughts on Friday Night Smackdown. What was your match of the night and why? Leave those responses for me in the comment section below or in a video response. I look forward to reading what you guys have to say on Friday Night Smackdown. So, And don't forget, the WGS YouTube channel reaches 1,000 subscribers by January 21st. I will willingly...